Hi dear friends, in this video we will talk about speaking tips or speaking secrets that you can use in your uh, speaking test. Uh, but before you start watching this video, make sure that you have subscribed to this channel. Uh, firstly, I want to give you uh, a brief information about speaking. Speaking consists of three parts, part one, part two, part three. It lasts from 11 to 14 minutes. Don't forget that the examiner is not going to listen to you for longer than 15 minutes. 15 minutes, this is your limit. So you shouldn't give very long answers. The examiner will not listen. If you answer longer to your questions, you may have some questions unanswered in part three, and that's why they will be marked as unanswered questions. And this is not good for you. He will not say, wow, that person um, shared with me some interesting thoughts, some interesting views in part one and part two. That's why I'll give him a good mark. Be careful with this. And uh, the most important thing is that don't be out of topic. If you speak out of topic, the examiner will not consider this answer as well. You should directly answer the question, directly. Then of course you should, you should support your answer. Okay, let's go to those tips. The first one is that sometimes we hesitate, sometimes we don't know what to do. So you can add some discourse markers. Uh, it gives you one or two seconds to think actually and you think, but don't overuse it. When we say it to some of our students, they start to overuse, they insert this actually every time, actually, actually, actually. Don't insert it every time. Or this means, this means, they insert this phrase, like this means, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. this means, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or um, as you know. You should use as you know, because it's kind of a politer version of your speaking. You show the examiner or the person with whom you have a conversation that you understand that he knows this as you know. But again, no overusage. Don't overuse these structures. It's very important. <laughs> Next, uh, discourse markers are also important to show your attitude to the situation that you are talking about. For example, unfortunately, fortunately, luckily, stupidly, uh, I don't know, honestly, to be honest. So you should add some attitude in order to show the examiner that you are into this conversation and it's interesting for you to talk. You tell him about something and you show your attitude to, to the situation that you are telling him. But Again, no overusage. Be careful with overusage. Don't use some words too much. The next secret or the next tip for speaking is that uh, you should use some phrasal verbs. Uh, many people say use idioms, use idioms. Idioms are good, but you can't overuse them. But phrasal verbs, that's cool. You show the examiner that I can speak with phrasal verbs, I can speak like a native speaker, because native speakers, they use phrasal verbs in their daily speech. Let's talk about what's phrasal verb. This is a verb with a preposition that changes its, its meaning. Put, it's put something on something. Put a book on the table, but it was a put on, it's like dress yourself. Dress yourself is a, an academic phrase. You can't use it when in your daily speech, dress yourself. You, you say put on, put on a coat, like put on something. Uh, you should learn these prepositional phrases in order to improve your speech. Uh, coming to idioms, don't use idioms and don't use them in a fake way, in a fake manner. Because when you use it, your face is like this, I was over the moon. So the examiner understands that, that you just want to show him that you know this idiom. He says, okay, okay, I understand that you know this idioms. There is no need to highlight this with such emotions. So don't overuse idioms. Uh, what you can do with idioms, take some of them, learn these idioms and uh, use them in some sentences. Just create some sentences in your brain with that idiom. In this way, you can make yourself accustomed to their usage. And while using them during your speaking exam, you, you wouldn't sound, you wouldn't seem the examiner so weird, like I was over the moon. And the examiner says, okay, plus he knows the idiom. Some information about part two. Of course, it's good, it's good to be structured, like, uh, when it was, what it was, when you see this, blah, 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 explain your feeling. But what I, what I advise, I advise to cover all of this in one minute, because uh, if you start talking about each bullet point 
for a longer period of time you probably cannot do it in two minutes and there can be some bullet points unanswered and that's bad that's why i advise to cover all bullet points first in one minute and in the next minute to expand your bullet points a bit more and the examiner will stop you when he sees that you have told everything and this, this is okay some information about part three part three questions they are uh, more uh, difficult about your world vision about your outlook that's why you can take some time like two or three seconds you can say wow that's a tough question let me think a bit and the examiner will give you some time because he understands that this is not a, an easy question if i ask you something about life life philosophy and so on of course it's difficult to answer immediately we need some time to think about this that's okay you can say but don't take so much time because our time on speaking is limited it's 15 minutes Regarding part one, the examiner will ask your name first of all, and if your name sounds to him a bit difficult to pronounce, he can ask you, how can I call you? You can say a shorter form of your name. And some important questions, some not important, but frequent questions that are asked during part one, it's about your home, it's about your house, uh, the place where you live, and uh, it's about your occupation. These questions are asked very frequently, so prepare some good uh, answers for these questions. Because in part one, they usually ask about occupation, they usually ask about your hometown, and so on. Be careful with narrative tenses. What's narrative tenses? This is present perfect, past perfect, future perfect. You should use this narrative tenses because native speakers, they use it. And especially you can confuse yourself when you, when you speak about something in the past and when you speak about something before that happened, it should be past perfect. And you, if you don't use past perfect, it's a big mistake. That's why be careful with past perfect, especially when you talk about the past. For example, you say that I went to Brazil. Before that, I, I bought some tickets. You should say I had bought some tickets because, because you bought some tickets before you went to Brazil. You had bought some tickets. Be careful with narrative tenses again. The next one, don't be robotic, like don't uh, tell with the examiner as if you are not a real person. Try to be, try to participate more in this conversation. Try to be like, try to catch eye contact. Don't afraid to look into his eyes. Look into the eyes of the examiner to show that you are into the conversation. You should be like a real person with real emotions. Don't overuse like, kinda, every time like, 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 or kinda, kinda, wanna, gonna, yeah. This will not increase your score. This just adds some fake aspect to your conversation. Try to be real, but uh, with good vocabulary, grammar, fluency, and so on. I hope this video is helpful. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thank you.